Welcome to This Week in Location-Based Marketing. On today's show, do we need another coupon platform? Retail may not think so. Product launches by SpotBro, Pretzel, BusBud, plus Blipper shows us AR's potential, the greatest mobile payments infographic ever, and special guest Alexis Rask from Shopkick, coming up right now. everybody and welcome to this week in location based marketing this is episode number 103 we're recording this live from ottawa ontario canada where it is november 9th late at night for me and of course my name is rob woodbridge from untether.tv and with me as always but not from toronto again from around the world mr asif khan yes asif khan from the location based marketing association still in singapore um but uh, heading, uh, heading over to London uh, tomorrow uh, for yet another conference. Um, yeah, so uh, it's great to be here. Um, and uh, as always, you can find us at the LBMA on the .com or the Twitter. And um, yeah, another, uh, another great show. But um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, we, had, we had a phenomenal event, Rob, in, uh, in Singapore uh, this past Monday. Uh, with the launch of the, our first uh, LVMA chapter uh, in Southeast Asia, and um, turnout was good. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was phenomenal. Over 150 uh, people came out. Uh, we, um, you know, great representation from startups, from you know the media side of things, carriers, uh, and, uh, and and brands as well. And um, yeah, it's it, it's been a whirlwind week uh, of follow up uh, since that event on Monday in terms of just. Uh, Individual meetings with uh, you know big guys like the Singapore government, uh, Singtel, the, uh, the 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 biggest carrier in the region. Um, you know a number of uh, of interesting startups. Uh, you know so so there's certainly a lot going on in this market, um, not to be ignored in terms of mobile and location and social and how all those things fit together and um, you know and obviously uh, you know you know just connected media as well. So. Um, Really excited about it, and uh, want to thank the uh, the team here, uh, and in particular Christian uh, and Melvin uh, from Christian from Use and Melvin from Wi-Fi, and uh, who uh, were our sort of lead members in, uh, in in bringing us to the region. I love it. it you know, it was such a uh, I, I followed it uh, through video and through some of the uh, photos that were snapped and put onto Facebook, and it, did, it just seemed like it was a great crowd. It was like you know what it was. It, it could have been anywhere. The number of people that you had there, but uh, 150 people is a great turnout for for something like this. And and obviously, it's just going to grow from there. So congratulations on extending your reach into Singapore, man. Yeah, uh, you know, and 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 kind of, you know, we move onwards and upwards, and uh, there's already conversations uh, based on on this week about uh, you know extending into other parts of Southeast Asia now, um, and and you know Asia proper, uh, so to speak, as well. You know, Tokyo and, and Shanghai, and uh, you know and places like that as well. So. We'll see where we go, but uh, there's there's a lot going on in this market. Well, if you ever need somebody to just carry your baggages for you, Asif, I am more than willing to come out there and, and be your manservant for a little while and and, uh, and follow you around. Sure. Manservant. Yeah, we'll, we'll get that out next exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, a big show, uh, you, you know, we got to get you uh, going so you can catch your plane. Um, you know, big week, obviously, this week in uh, in Canada, the United States. And the rest of the world, uh, but everybody was focused, obviously, on the election that happened. And, uh, you know, as, as everybody knows by now, the election happened and, and came and went. And, and certainly uh, location, uh, marketing, and uh, social played a huge role in, in this election. It was the probably the first showcase, really for Twitter. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, exit polls were done a little bit differently. Everything was done differently. Um, you know, there was no cap, there was no silencer that was put on this uh, this election. It was pretty amazing to watch. And, and I can't wait to see how all the data flows from this as a result and lessons learned for the next election, whether that's in Canada, whether it's in the United States, whether it's around the world, it doesn't matter. Lots of lessons learned, but uh, that's a location lesson case study ready to be had. But that's that was the focus Everybody was on, but we've got some great stories that uh, land smack dab in the middle of this location-based planet, and it is that because these are stories from around the world. We've got some Canadian stories, some American stories. We've it's pretty much pretty much Canadian and American today. Um, but we've got uh, yeah one bit of one bit of Spain. Oh, there. that's right. Yeah, 
We got, uh, yeah, absolutely. We got a little bit of Spain in there. And, uh, you know, we've got stories from Google. We got stories from uh, an Ottawa company called Pretzel, Montreal company called Busbud. Uh, we've got uh, Spot Bros. That's the Spain company. Uh, Retail Me Not uh, launching, uh, getting into the mobile coupon space a little bit deeper. Of course, we've got our resource of the week. And... Our product today is Shopkick, and I got to sit down with Alexis Rask, who's the VP and GM of Brand Partnerships for Shopkick. If you haven't heard of Shopkick, shame on you if you've been listening to this. And a really fascinating conversation I had with her on how Shopkick helps their brands create deeper customer loyalty through their product. This is a pretty in incredible uh, uh, interview that I did with her episode that'll be up on Untether.tv later this week. Plus, we got our funding news and the witty banter that goes between Asif and I during these stories. So why don't we kick this off, Asif? Big show. All right, first first story. This is this is an interesting one because a lot of news uh, that came out of uh, North America uh, over the last couple of days was Groupon's results, and not so great were Groupon's results. They're talking about layoffs. They're talking about things that we've talked about that you know people are coming to realize that Groupon is just a coupon company. But this company called Retail Me Not getting into this mobile. Uh, they they were already doing coupons, but what did they launch? They launched a mobile coupon platform, Asif. <laughs> because you know we need yet another one of these um, yeah. yeah you know it, it's it, it's a saturated space um you know I, I you know i i can't see a lot of uptake of of a platform like this uh, at this point now in terms of just you know do we need another one um you know from the merchant perspective you know i get it they pl they'll play with anybody and everybody you know it's it's just about you know, having uh, as much reach as possible. So I, you know, and and so they got the usual suspects, the Targets and the Macy's and the J.C. Penney's are all on board and pushing coupons through this new platform called Retail Me Not. I mean, Retail Me Not is a uh, well-established brand in the uh, mobile couponing or not not mobile, but uh, web couponing and discounting space. Been around for a long time. You know, lots of people use it. Um, so I mean, it, it, it's not a uh, it's not rocket science for them to make this leap over to mobile. Um, I, I just think it's you know way too little, way too late, um, you know, to be coming into this game now. And uh, I, I don't see a lot of uh, a lot of consumers kind of all of a sudden saying, "Well, you know, I'm going to drop the ten other ones that I've been using and uh, and and uh, and add this one in as well." So. Um, you know, not, I'm not all that excited. No, you know, the only thing I can think of is that this is just a natural extension for them because they have such great coverage on the on the website that maybe this is just that piece that that uh, for redeeming in the mobile space. But my goodness, like when are people going to learn? Um, you know, Groupon's not out there buying any new companies. So why go through this process? Uh, you know, unless these guys are a little bit unique, which it doesn't seem like they are. But the question is, why would all these big brands, these these uh, retailers, get involved? Is it just that they don't know who to pick, so they'll pick them all? Yeah, you know, I mean, if if you're if you're any one of these brands, I mean, you know, basically it's just a play on, you know, my you know my coupon is my coupon, and it's available in any and every platform you know that's out there. Um, it doesn't matter. To, I mean, if I'm Macy's, I don't care where how how the consumer gets the coupon. Um, whether they're using Retail Me Not or Foursquare or this one or that one or Groupon, I mean, it's it's all the same to me, um, you know. So, so I don't see a problem for the merchant, um, and and I agree with you. I mean, you know, Retail Me Not is, is a big company, part of Whale Shark Media, one of the biggest couponing, you know, uh, companies in, in the world. Um, so, so yeah, it's an extension of their existing business. I just think it's you know. Uh, way too little, too late. If you're trying to, you know, come out and say that you know we've got the biggest, baddest mobile couponing platform out there. Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything else to say to that other than good luck. Yeah, yeah, like it's so competitive, and, and uh, this, you mean the challenge is probably not getting coupons. It's about remembering how to redeem them and what platform you've got the coupons on. And on, and, and then when you get to the when you get to the uh, checkout or the teller or the cashier, it's like which. Which app do I launch? And you know, it just gets so confusing. Um, and maybe, yeah. maybe that, that's a big, it's a big opportunity, and that's what obviously Apple's trying to yeah. tackle. But good luck. Yeah. So, so I will say, I mean, the the one little thing that that I, I do like about it is is that uh, you know, in the release of this, they built Passbook integration for Apple. 
So, you know, those coupons that you're, you're logging and storing can show up in the passbook and, and be surfaced based on your location. So, obviously, I like that piece. Um, but, hey. A big deal. I mean, that's tough to say that, you know, this is, this is going to be, uh, you know, my new mobile coupon. I just account. don't get it. I, 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 there's so much opportunity for innovation out there. Why, why, why are companies just, like, we're going to talk about a couple of companies in the, in the coming stories that are, that are trying new things, at least, that are innovating, that are taking location to a different level and, and making us think about location in a different way. But, but yeah. yeah, so let's, let's not talk about Retail Me Not anymore. RetailMeNot.com if you're interested. Um, but, obviously, we're not enthusiastic about this. That's why we lead with that story. It's not a lead story. It's a lead berry. All right. Why don't we jump to the second story, which is, which is, uh, you know, another one of these companies that that are trying to think about location in a different way. This is a company called Spot Spot Bros. I'm going to say assume that it's Spot Brothers, right? Uh, Spot Bros. This is a company that is um, using location for uh, something that we all use, which is text communications and group communications. This is this is a an interesting play, don't you? Wouldn't you say, Asif? Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of players in this space as well, um, but, you know, nowhere near like the couponing uh, segment. <laughs> I, I think there's still opportunity here. Um, what I like about this is, you know, first of all, it's it's Android and iOS. Uh, we're talking about uh, it's a mobile messaging, you know, messaging platform, right? here, talking about free messaging yeah. here. So the biggest player in this space is WhatsApp um, that, you know, gazillions of people use. Uh, Spot Bros launched this thing uh, last month. Um, they've already got 300,000 users. They're targeting primarily the Spanish-speaking countries, uh, you know, at least at least to start. Um, and it's got some interesting features. I mean, it's got the normal sort of you know uh, messaging stuff, uh, but then it's got uh, you can send location-based messages called which they call shouts um, to uh, you know 50 users inside of a mile. Uh, shouts can be forwarded on to other users uh, in a reshout kind of uh, thing that they call it. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Um, so you know, if you've got a group of friends and that kind of stuff that you're trying to communicate with, coordinate your your social activities for the evening, um, you know those kinds of things become interesting. Um, and then there's there's even some um, some email capability built in this. So they got a thing called SB uh, Mails. Uh, you know, which are you know short messages, uh, 200 characters um, that can connect to a, a mini web page uh, that can then you can host videos and and images and maps and all kinds of stuff on. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, the WhatsApp you know isn't doing that stuff uh, today. So they they put a bunch of things in here, um, you know. But you know, th there's a lot of similar things emerging in this space. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with yet another one, and and especially going after a, a specific market like the Spanish-speaking market. Uh, to me, that's interesting. Well, what they also did is they managed to, like, within a matter of moments, have 300,000 downloads, and I think that kind of shows that the incredible uh, voraciousness of this industry. I mean, a WhatsApp has 50 million downloads. Isn't that? It, it's kind of crazy. It's over. Well, 50 million. Yeah, 50 million downloads is what it was uh, on Android alone. So I think that they're actually over 100 million uh, uh, for WhatsApp. And I think that's an incredible number. But 300,000 downloads um, for uh, for Spot Bros in the first couple of weeks is is an insane amount of downloads. And I think that just shows just shows how how, uh, how big this opportunity is. And whether they're doing it right or not, I, I like the location layer, um, you know, the location uh, text-based uh, messaging based on your location and who's around you. But again, this stuff's been done quite a bit. Um, but I like the fact that they're also focusing on this segment, the Spanish-speaking segment right now. Um, but uh, we'll yeah. see. You know, and, and maybe maybe just as a, a side story on top of this, you know, one of the things that I happened to uh, you know read in a newspaper this week out here in Singapore is um, you know the the other side of WhatsApp uh, in the Asian market in China is WeChat. Um, so China has a thing called WeChat, um, and you want to talk about users? There's 800 million users on WeChat. Wow. Um, and. Uh, and and this article I was reading was talking about you know the, the the bulk of that is in China itself. They've started to go into Thailand and some of the other uh, Asian markets, uh, and that's what the article was talking about. But but uh, Tencent, which which is the company that owns we, uh, WeChat, um, uh, the article was saying that they see an opportunity and they're going hard now to bring WeChat into 
uh, Europe and into North America. Um, and so they're going to go head to head to head against WhatsApp uh, with with uh, with the WeChat uh, solution. And it, you know you don't often see Chinese companies be successful in coming outside of China. Uh, well, oftentimes they don't. Oftentimes the, they don't need to come outside of China to be successful when you've got 800 million users. But but these guys have said, hey, you know, like uh, the article was, you know, very clear on that's that's their focus now is going beyond the uh, the Asian market. Wow. So, you know, so. There's lots of this going on, uh, you know. So yeah, I like what Spot Bros is doing. Um, I like WhatsApp. I like WeChat. So you know, this this is a good market. Well, if you're interested in Spot Bros, go to Spot Bros exactly as it sounds. Spot Bros B R O S dot com. You'll find some more information about them. You can download the app, and uh, you can use it. Uh, it's it's in English. So if uh, if you want to use it in uh, in North America, go ahead. There's no no problem there, and it's on both platforms, as uh, Steve said, Android and iOS. Both platforms. We just kind of leave out Windows 8 right now but uh, and BlackBerry, but yeah. both platforms. You know, uh, so location-based uh, mm -hmm. conversations around Spot Bros. This is uh, – our next story is, is very similar. It's around location. Uh, it's an Ottawa-based company, which is where I am, where I happen to be. It's a company called Pretzel, P-R-E-T-Z-I-L.com. This is a company that – that is in the uh, game discovery or social game discovery. They, they basically uh, help you discover games and they put a, a location layer on this, which is pretty unique. I think it's, it's, an, it's a neat way of, uh, of leveraging location for game discovery. You know, there are companies that are doing uh, search like Chomp that was acquired by Apple. And there's, you know, that's traditionally what they've been, what they've, uh, how, how you found games uh, through search and through inference and referrals. But this one is about Hey, what games are people playing around you? Pretty cool. It is pretty cool. I mean, you know, one of the hardest things with, with any app, whether it's a game or a couponing platform or, or what have you, is, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you promote it? How do you get, you know, uh, get, make people aware of it and, and uh, you know, ultimately drive downloads, uh, you know, of, of, your, of your solution? And so, you know, in the gaming environment specifically, you know, games by their nature are social, uh, you know, and, and shared uh, to some extent. But, you know, finding, um, you know, other players near you and finding, uh, you know, what games are hot in your in your neighborhood or, or around you is an interesting way to increase, uh, you know, app downloads and, and, and app engagement uh, from that perspective. So, you know, I, I like what Pretzel is doing. I like the focus on, on gaming in particular. Um, you know, I, I think I mentioned to you on a separate conversation, Rob, you know, we're, from the LBMA's perspective, you know, we're increasingly drawing uh, game companies into the association uh, that are building location-based games specifically. So the idea of games where you're playing other people uh, against other people that are around you. And, you know, so then when you take that as a concept and then you layer on something like Pretzel, to help expand, uh, you know, the base of players, um, you know, in that kind of a context, it becomes a really interesting uh, uh, viewpoint. Yeah, and and I, you know, I, it's it's a great way of leveraging location. Now, you don't have to be in these locations. You know, most most people who are involved in the in the game space will probably go and dive a little bit deeper than the top twenty five apps that you see on on uh, on iTunes or the App Store or any of the uh, application stores, the mobile app stores. But this allows you to actually go in and say, okay, listen, I'm interested in what's going on in Calgary, Alberta, or uh, Cape Town, South Africa, or in in Singapore. You know, what are the top games that are being played there right right now, so that I can get yeah. global discovery. It does all of the analytics for you, and I think that that's really that's really key, especially if you are in the game market. And you're trying to figure out where you should strategically put your game in order to be able to go and dominate a, a market. And that and this this app can actually help you decide where to launch your game and then track how you're doing in that country, which is which is very cool. And then my guess is that there's a way uh, you know that this is how you can see how the influences. If you're going to do spot marketing, if you're going to do buy some banner ads uh, inside of other games in those countries to promote your games, right? So I think that this is a really this can be a very powerful tool above and beyond discovery if you're an app maker to be able to go and find how your game is doing uh, outside of your country. I think that's it, they, they might have yeah. something here. Pretzel. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And uh, way to go, uh, go Canada. Yeah, that's uh, Kyle McInnes and the crew at Pretzel. So go to uh, pretzel.com, P-R-E-T-Z-I-L.com. It's funny. I used to uh, co-host a, uh, a podcast way back in the day um, called, um, I don't even know. It was like, uh, you know, What's Cool with Blackberry? 
and Blackberry Cool or something like that. We did 20 episodes way back, maybe three or four years ago with, with Kyle. He's a, uh, he's a great character. So support Kyle, pretzel.com. All right, our uh, fourth story. This is very cool. Talk about election news. This was uh, this is a company called Blipper, which is Blip AR, and it's uh, it, it what did it, it leveraged the U.S. currency, the five dollar and the ten dollar bill, to do some augmented reality fun during the election, which is pretty cool. Hello, everyone. I'm going to show you how to get exclusive Obama coverage right from your mobile device. All you need is the Obama logo or a five dollar bill, an iPhone, Android, or an app supporting tablet. Go to your application store and download the Blipper app, B-L-I-P-P-A-R. Hover the application over the logo or bill and watch it come to life. Win this thing door by door, block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood. Become a campaign volunteer, use the tax calculator, or go into some grassroots fundraising. Snap a photo high fiving Obama. Post on Facebook and Twitter. Facebook, Twitter, can rock back. The money for education will cost us. No insurance when you get sick will cost us. Tax in the middle class, that's it will cost us. Here's my favorite. Listen to the BMG I song by Mayer, which is produced in support of I mean, the Obama campaign. For me, this is just fun. I mean, when you think about augmented reality and you think about, um, you know, trying to drive interest in these platforms and, and getting, you know, just more people on board, you know, it's fun things like this that, uh, you know, if you can get the word out about it, that can really help to drive engagement. And so, you know what they did here was uh, they used the uh, five dollar and ten dollar bills uh, in the U.S. Um, and so you could, you would hold up the Blipper app over a five dollar note uh, or an Obama campaign logo, and it would basically drive you to um, you know content uh, you know to their to the Obama uh, mobile web- website uh, to links on how to volunteer to a uh, tax calculator that uh, compares the effects of your taxes uh, under the Obama plan versus the Romney plan. You know, really cool stuff. Um, you know, that just, you know, drives obviously awareness and, you know, engagement around the political uh, argument that was going on, you know, leading up to the election. Um, and, um, you know, and for Blipper, you know, uh, increases in, uh, in in the user base. And then with the ten dollar bill, uh, you know, that one was connected to uh, to the Romney uh, campaign, uh, and same kind of thing. So you know, you you uh, you blipped it, and then it got you know, it brought you to the uh, Romney's five point plan. Um, you know, and again, you could you can connect with the campaign. You could you know, have a photo op uh, with uh, you know yourself shaking hands with Romney, uh, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, just fun stuff. Um, you know, really, you know, I, I really like the the whole augmented reality space right now. I think 2013 is going to be a big year in augmented reality. Um, and actually, speaking of that, if you're in New York and you're listening, or you're going to be in New York, November the 27th, um, in during the day, uh, we're having uh, the LBMA is hosting our LBMA New York chapters hosting an event on augmented reality. Uh, keynotes with uh, Vivian Rosenthal from uh, Gold Run, and a panel that includes Vivian and Blipper and uh, a couple others that we're we're about to announce uh, later this week. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be a, a great chance if you're interested in 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 this space, your brand, your agency, you're trying to figure out how to use this stuff. Uh, you should come out on the 27th. It's on our on the LBMA website. So, anyways, love what these guys are doing. And, uh, you know, can't wait to see more. Yeah, I, I wonder what the significance of the $5 versus the $10. Why was, uh, why was uh, Obama on the $5? You know, you know the, the Romney folks are, you know, uh, you know, they just got a little bit more money to spend. They got more $10 in, in their wallet than the uh, Obama can, you know, uh, uh, folks. Now, one of, the, one of the big, well, maybe, pro- probably, um, uh, you know, I, I heard numbers that this, this whole campaign for the two sides... Um, was a four billion dollar uh, spend, right? Four billion dollars is what they spent on on the, this campaign. So it's 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 crazy. What this really does, Asif, is is it really shows the power of augmented reality, as you said. But it, it shows that there's there's an ability to take anything, any object, and put a marketing spin on this. I mean, they took federal currency 
and put a marketing message on top of that currency. So imagine what you can do with absolutely everything out there with augmented reality. You can turn everything in to a marketing message or a message or something where, you know, it's not owned by the people that actually distribute it. Like you can, if you can take a $5 bill, which is a legal, ten, legal tender document, like 300 million of these $5 bills floating around the United States uh, and make each one of those a marketing message, that's crazy powerful. And, and it kind of disrupts or decentralizes this marketing concept, right? Which is you're focusing all your attention on billboards or on advertisements or banner ads or television ads, where now anything becomes uh, a, a marketing opportunity. That's insane. Well, it, it does, but it also opens up a whole other question, uh, which is as this stuff becomes more pervasive in the marketplace, uh, you know, do the brands start to, you know, kind of weigh into legal discussions around ownership of their brand rights in the, you know, in the augmented environment, right? So, uh, you know, not unlike the discussions, the same discussions we were having way back when in Second Life and things yeah. like that. So, um, you know, so, so, so I think there's a lot of stuff there. And obviously, you know, we, we could spend an hour just talking about that. But, uh, you know, the bottom line is, is AR is here uh, and, and it's on the rise. And uh, I think every brand should be looking at ways that they can uh, they can be engaging with this. Right yeah, now. I, I'm with you on it. it. It is a very powerful tool and and done well. I love the fact that you can high five Obama or you can shake uh, Romney's hand in this. It's it's pretty cool. So um, but yeah. that's it. So Blipper, go to be you know, and the only the only thing I don't get is so we can raise all this money. Yeah. We can spend four billion dollars on on our campaign. Yep. Why can't we? Well, why can't we? Uh, you know, pull pull those same people that are donating all that money to our campaigns together, and raise the same amount of money and, and donate that to the, uh, the to the deficit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like come on. The whole thing. The whole thing was the whole election was fought on fiscal responsibility and uh, and the collapse of the U.S. economy. And here we are spending four billion dollars on uh, electing somebody who is going to then become fiscally responsible for uh, for the budget and for paying down the deficit. It's crazy. I know. I know. Yeah. And, yeah. All right. We, uh, end of end of the political we digress. Yeah. Let's, let's move on to the well, next Well, if you're story. interested in Blipper, go to Blipper, B-L-I-P-P-A-R.com. So Blipper.com. All right, our fifth story. Instead of having to sift through and organize all the information you need throughout your day, all that information is ready at the exact moment you actually need it. Introducing Google Now. Now with Android, one simple swipe gives you the information that is relevant to you right now. As you leave your house, Google Now is smart enough to check current traffic conditions and has prepared an alternate route for your commute. Google Now is always one step ahead, so you can feel more confident as you navigate your day. When you're at a subway station, Google Now can tell you what trains are next, find you interesting local places to eat. Is there a good Japanese noodle bar nearby? And when you're in a restaurant, your phone already has the best dishes listed for you. Google Now automatically keeps you updated on your favorite sports teams in real time, just in case you are curious about that no-hitter. With the predictive power of now, you get just what you need to know right when you need it. And this thing looks absolutely awesome. And we've talked about this all the time about obfuscating search, the fact that Siri just kind of puts Google's business at risk simply because most of their money is generated on banner advertisements. So now Google Now really almost does the same thing, but it pulls in so much information that you're already giving Google and it becomes a powerful virtual assistant on your phone. This is very cool. It is very cool, and you know Google has always had the the tools there. Um, you know we were just waiting for it to get assembled, and and it looks like it's starting to come together now, uh, in the latest version of Google Now. I mean Google Now when it launched was was effectively uh, you know Foursquare. Um, you know you know find find deals around you uh, based on your location. But now what we're what we're seeing is you know the real Google Now is is really about any content. Effectively, it, it, it's, it, it, in some respects, it's like a passbook, um, you know, from, from an Apple perspective, you know, with a Siri, um, you know, everybody's, you know, everybody's got to kind of move in that same direction. So what we're talking about now is, is, is content being surfaced, you know, based on relevancy, uh, based on location, based on, 
time of day, based on all sorts of different factors, um, you know, and, and search basically, uh, you know, uh, just being generated without you having to do anything, uh, without you having to type anything um, or, you know, put words in, in a query box. So, you know, you've got content you know, being being delivered uh, in context. It's weather, it's your flight information, it's sports scores, it's your stock prices, your traffic information, your maps, because Google's got that, obviously, um, you know, deals nearby, all of that stuff being kind of, you know, combined and put into sort of one common uh, uh, system, which is, is, is the now, the new Google now. Um, so I, I, I really like this. This is... Uh, you know uh, where they need to be, uh, in my opinion, and uh, I'm sure we're going to see the same thing from uh, from Microsoft uh, shortly as well. Yeah, this this is really really cool, and it's a very compelling um, you know mix of all these services that Google has to offer. And and what I love about it is that it, you know it's not just about um, uh, you know temperature outside because you know everybody understands that that's you know. I launch my phone and I want to see what the temperature is like outside and, and there's a whole bunch of apps that do that but it's it's literally I get in my car and it understands you know where you should be based on the calendar uh, you know based on your calendar if you're using a Google Calendar and then it tells you the, the the directions and then it tells you the traffic and the weather there and the parking availability and 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 then you know if you're you like the Giants or you like the Yankees like I do it'll give you the scores automatically just because it understands it learns from you that it just displays the scores and and that to me, is just the beginning of what, what things are going to happen. And you're right. Microsoft will come up with this. Apple will come up with this. It, 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 it's, it's search without searching. Yeah. Uh, and even without voice query yeah. uh, in the case of Siri, right? It, it's, it's just about understanding you and understanding what you want, um, you know, predictive modeling and analytics in some respects, and you know, correlation of data, and putting that all in a framework that you know just presents you the stuff that you know they think you you need and want right now. So I, I like yeah, it's it. pretty cool, and it's it's almost it's almost compelling enough to to move to the Android platform. What do you say? <laughs> I don't know about that. All right, all right, but all right. Our last story. One these days. Yeah, you know, I think everybody eventually will will have uh, you know something uh, in Android, whether it's a tablet, whether it's your television set, whether it's a Chromebook, or whether it's a, a device like this. Uh, it just depends on what's the, what the most compelling service is. And right now, Google obviously has the most compelling service. Now, when they tie in the car that drives itself, right, and into the Android platform, and then all of a sudden you've got this great ecosystem that is pretty powerful. So, um, anyway. That's, uh, that's Google Now. Search without searching. Very, very cool. Our bonus story, our sixth and final story today, is uh, a Montreal company. Uh, this, is, this is interesting. I, you know, I don't, I don't take the bus very often. I'm uh, more of a train guy when I go long distance. But Bus Bud, obviously, uh, f these guys in Montreal found a need to show when, like, get up-to-date calendaring and ticketing information and cost of, you know, bus fares. And I can't believe that this doesn't exist. Yeah, I, I couldn't either. Um, you know, it seems like it's it, it's one of those things where, uh, I, you know, I, I think that, you know, there's certainly a market for it, uh, you know, in, within the travel and hospitality uh, community. I can't see something like this uh, surviving on its own for very long and, and not being scooped up by, you know, an Expedia or a Travelocity or a you know, um, you know, one of the big, uh, uh, you know, uh, services in the, in the industry. Um, so, uh, you know, good on bus bud for, you know, finding a market that, uh, you know, is underserved. Uh, apparently they've got 4,000 cities, uh, logged in the system. Um, you know, South America, U.S., uh, U.S., Europe, uh, all over the place. Um, and, and so effectively what we're talking about here is, is the bus scheduling data uh, and just combining that in, into a, a database, you know, by country, by city, uh, and putting that all in, in one spot. I, I like it. It's, it. it's so simple. It's, it's hard not to. Yeah, and I think uh, that's the beauty of it. I'm just pulling it up. Uh, does it have a schedule? No. Uh, I was just pulling up the schedule if I wanted to go from Ottawa to Vancouver. So I, I've tried it a couple of times. Some of the data isn't there. Um, but... You know, I, here, here's maybe a little contrarian is that I, I don't I don't think that this can survive simply because they want to get into ticket purchasing and and having people buy tickets right from this thing. You know, and, and it's not a random choice is that oftentimes you you can I can go to Greyhound, I can go to uh, the Voyager bus station and I can pick up tickets and 
and I don't, I don't know if this is appealing. There's no real value to this to anybody. Um, it might be in 4,000 countries, but, uh, but I, I just don't see the value in this. I'm, I'm sorry. I, um, this is one of those things that perhaps n not, not, uh, it's, it's a great hobby for bus, bus riders, I suppose. Um, but they collated a whole bunch of open source data and they put it into this and, and, uh, and 4,000 countries is, is good, but no business model is not good. So, uh, it's easy, replicatable, Repl it's easy to replicate. Yep. But if you're interested in that, go to go no, to BusBud. We'll, we'll deny that one. BusBud.com. BusBud.com. Montreal company. That's it. We had six stories today simply because there was just so much going on. We thought, listen, we're going to cram it in there. And we managed to do it in the right amount of time. Uh, some great stories. Some some pretty impressive uh, location stories. Uh, my favorite, obviously, Blipper. I love what they did uh, with the election and the currency. And Google Now is a uh, certainly making a uh, a strong case for the virtual assistant in your pocket. Certainly dominating, doing a little bit more than what Siri can do. Well, what are your favorite stories? Reach out on tethergmail.com or see if at the LBMA. Uh, these have been curated, collated, and condensed for your listening pleasure and your viewing pleasure by one Mr. Asif Khan. Thanks, Asif, for bringing yeah. those all to us. Awesome. Awesome from Singapore. All right, I, I had a gr I had a great uh, opportunity, uh, really ecstatic to sit down uh, finally with somebody from Shop Shopkick. This was Alexis Rask, who is the, as I said, the VP and GM of Brand Partnerships for Shopkick. She had some great insight. This is a long interview that I did, the episode that I did with her, 55 minutes, um, that I, 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 we could have probably gone on for a couple of hours just simply because what these guys are doing is at the epicenter of retail and location. Very cool company. They're out of, uh, based right in the heart of Silicon Valley. And I, I, um, this is a short clip, maybe six or seven minutes around, a little bit about what the company does, but really about how Shopkick r extends, creates loyalty for the big brands inside of, uh, that, they're, that they're helping right now, which is, and they are helping some, some massive brands. One thing you'll notice that the excitement in, in the way that, uh, that Alexis talks, simply because she's, she's ecstatic to be working for this company. It's pretty obvious and uh, the energy is there. But I know, I see if you, you like Shopkick as well. Uh, I do. I mean, I, you know, I'm a big, first of all, I'm a big uh, proponent of the indoor positioning or indoor location space in general. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of great companies emerging. There's a lot of interesting ways to go about uh, figuring out the position of, of somebody inside of a uh, retail environment or, you know, any environment for that matter. Um, you know, I think Shopkicks is one of the, in, you know, more interesting ones using ultrasound technology uh, as opposed to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You know, a couple weeks ago we talked about, you know, Bite Light uh, doing, yeah, doing this using LED yeah. uh, light bulbs. Um, you know, there's a lot of great ways to do this. So, um, but yeah, big fan of Shopkick in that sense. Um, you know, the, you know, uh, you know, the key for them is, is, you know, they've got their own loyalty platform. It's cross retailer, uh, you know, with kick bucks and, and, you know, the ability to earn, earn bucks for, for visiting stores and, and being able to re redeem those for, uh, for rewards effectively. So uh, there's a lot of interesting things that the, the company does, uh, connections to TV, uh, with the CW and whatnot, um, kind of like Shazam like in that context of Shazamming uh, TV commercials. Um, so Great company, uh, good leadership, uh, and uh, yeah, um, looks like you got a good Let's interview. Roll. So here, here it is, is, Alexis. Alexis, thank you so much for being a part of this. I really appreciate having you here. Thank you so much for having me, Rob. The challenge of loyalty is that it's very difficult. It's fleeting right now because the power that the consumer has. How do you guys combat that? How do you help your customers? get their customers to come back into the store and drive revenue that way. Because ultimately, you know, loyalty to me means that you can charge a little bit more, that, that you're, you're servicing your customer at a, at a, at a place where they, they're not looking. They're not looking at a, at a competitor by based on price. They're, they're willing to pay a little bit more because they, they actually have a, an affection or an affliction with your brand. So how, how do you create that loyalty? So I think there's there's two things that we help with there. If we can make shopping more fun and we can make it more rewarding, both of those things from a psychological standpoint as well as an economic standpoint motivate consumers to behave differently. So if we can drive a delightful, fun, 
interactive in-store experience, guest experience, and help our retail partners, among the many things that they're doing to build an awesome in-store experience, if we can be one multi-channel layer of that, um, I think that that's a good place to start. We look at incrementality um, by a number of different definitions. Uh, most importantly, do we drive incremental foot traffic? Do we drive incremental basket size? Do we drive incremental buy rate on something that someone tends to buy really infrequently and maybe show it to them in a context that gets them to buy more regularly? So we look at and measure all of those things with our partners. As you would imagine, there are some data points that I can't share that are very specific and very interesting but are not ours to make public to the but world. But they're good. But they're very okay, good. Okay, you can so say that. I, they're very good, but I will I will give you an example. Yes, please. Black Friday is an important time of year for everyone in the retail space, Shopkick included. Last Black Friday, we saw a ton of walk-ins, which is our version of measuring foot traffic into store. A walk-in literally means I was standing outside of the store. Now I'm standing inside of the store. Shopkick's technology has recognized that, that precise movement into the store and the retailer has given me rewards just for walking in. So immediately I'm feeling good. I got points just for coming to the store. Now I'm, I'm warm, I'm engaged, I'm ready to go have a fun trip. So Black Friday last year was our biggest walk-in day ever. Then we said, what if we did another day? Not, not the real Black Friday, fake Black Friday. Black Friday 2, yes. we'll call it. We're just going to pick a random Friday and all of our retail partners will offer big walk-in rewards. And we'll see, did we only have that big foot traffic because people were going to shop anyway last Black Friday? Or did we drive something incremental because of the access point and relationship that we have with the consumers to push to them to tell them something was happening? We drove more foot traffic on Black Friday too than we drove on the real Black Friday. And then we did it again. And then we Yes, yeah, so we've done four Black Fridays, only one of which was the real one, um, and each one drove more and more and more foot traffic, and we leveraged our social channels and our partners got involved. So we are literally changing the game that if you go to a particular retailer, let's say once a week, we can be the reason you go twice. In a different category, maybe you only go see that retailer once or twice a year. If we could bring you in a third time, we are adding incrementality. Then if you think on the manufacturer side, what if we could get you to the shelf to actually physically pick up and engage with a product that you weren't thinking about buying today or that you really only bought for this one purpose once a year? Could we drive incremental buy rate? And we've proven partner by partner, program by program that we do all of those things. So we are in the business of driving incrementality and that helps build loyalty and it helps uh, create better equity. Do you think that that's the reason you guys are, are succeeding in, in this space? Because it's very crowded now, right? Like it's very crowded. I, I, there, I think, are literally a billion companies that are trying to do this and help retailers, um, you, you know, drive footfall, drive traffic um, and manufacturers dr drive sales on shelves. And it's so liberating because I, I love it now that, that, that the manufacturer has an ability to influence a decision on, you know, on a grocer's shelf, right? It's not up to the yeah. grocer anymore. But now, now the, so, but do you think that it's just that, that diligent focus on li kind of literally, okay, so your metric is this. All we want you to do is either come a second time to the store or when you're in there, we want you to buy a second product or a third product. Like that, that kind of, those kind of incremental wins keep you guys so focused, but also keep you focused on the right thing, which is literally getting your customers more money, right? That's, is that why you guys have been so successful? I mean, I, I think there are, there are other companies who have their own focus and their own approach to doing it. We obviously think that the focus on rewards as much as offers gotcha. is, is a differentiator. We're not just giving out rewards for low value actions. We're giving out rewards for high value shopping behaviors and actions. Um, we are presenting good deals and offers as they are timely and relevant as well. But so there's more to do than just discover a better booklet of coupons. 
And that was uh, Alexis Rask, who is the VP and GM of Brand Partnerships for Shopkick. Really appreciate the fact that she did that. She took in an hour out of her time, and uh, you'll see at the very end of the interview, she's basically people are banging on the window to get her to come to a meeting that she was already delayed for. So it was, you know, we were right in the middle of it, and uh, and she said, "Well, I got, I gotta go." And uh, so she parted. Or I swear, we would have been on the phone for uh, for two hours. So I really appreciate Alexis doing that. Go to shopkick.com if there if you have any information about that. We go to untether.tv for the full interview next Wednesday so probably two days from the time you're watching this if you're watching this live and if you're watching it past Wednesday well go to untether.tv and take a look at the entire interview all right now let's talk about our funding man funding 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 uh two funding stories um which you know one of them obviously uh we, we had a hard time coming up with this person with this company's name but we think it's called clue k-l-o-o what is K L L O K L O O Clue? Uh, I, I'm gonna call that Clue, uh, but I don't know uh, if that's how you actually say it. New York-based company uh, raised 1.4 million bucks, um, and uh, this is about you know finding recommendations uh, on cultural things and places around you, so events and fashion and nightlife and books and travel and dining and restaurants and. Um, you know, there's a lot of these things out there. Um, you know, they've they've got some good people on board uh, in terms of the uh, the investment here. Uh, so Kindler Capital led this round of this 1.4 million. They've got a celebrity uh, investment in here. C Cedric the Entertainer and Danny Masterson are investors in this. As is uh, Jason Kalkenis, the guy who founded Weblogs back in the day. Um, you know, and uh, you know, so, so there's there's certainly some big brand, big names in behind this thing. Um, you know, uh, you know, just Jason alone, uh, you know, uh, was one of the original investors in Goala back in the day. Um, so you know, these, you know, there, there's some pedigree here. The problem I have with this is, you know, just focusing on nightlife and 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 events and 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 stuff like that around you film and television and all of that um you know i don't know if if there's enough here on as a standalone thing unless you've already got some deal to work at that you've worked out behind the scenes where you're basically building this as a as a platform ultimately that's going to be rolled into aol or yahoo or you know one of those things um you know and, and or fitted in, fitted inside of um uh, you know, one of, one of those existing big players, which is entirely possible since, you know, that's, that's the history of Calcanis and some of these guys. So, but as a standalone, just as the product, if I take everything else out of the mix, um, I don't like, I, I, I think there's, <laughs> don't hold back, I think there's too many of these already. You've got Foursquare, you know, that's... doing their thing. You got Pandora doing stuff. You got, you know, uh, a lot of this kind of stuff going you got on. Facebook uh, doing this. You've got uh, basically every every coupon company doing discovery right now. But uh, my my first my first inclination was that this was just Foursquare, like Foursquare went through this circuitous route to become a discovery agent, right? A location based discovery agent, and uh, that's what Clue is, but probably not with the same database, right? Yeah, you know, and 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 they, you know, I was reading the uh, the release around this, and they said that. Um, well, I'll, I'll quote it here. Let me just pull it up, uh, which I thought was really kind of weird. They said, uh, even though Facebook, Foursquare, and other social platforms may offer social data that could reveal users' cultural preferences, because they absolutely all do, yep. um, uh, Clue chose not to integrate them uh, beyond you know, allowing Facebook uh, sign-in, because they felt it was too noisy. So basically, what they're saying is, is that you know, um, well, you know, just just focusing on these sort of you know finding entertainment and stuff around you, in their view, is enough of a category onto itself, and and that's where I have a problem. I don't think, I don't agree. But anyways, we're here to talk about funding. So one point four million bucks coming from, uh, you know, from some players uh, in the industry, and uh, you know. I'm, I'm going to hope and pray that uh, for these guys' sake that they've already worked out the deal on the other side. Um, and, uh, you know, a Yahoo or an AOL or somebody like that is, uh, is already, uh, you know, this is just outsourced R and D. Uh, yeah, exactly. Cause yeah, this is uh, just competitive space, but $1.4 million. It's not 
20 million because then we would be rolling on the floor laughing at the people who put that much money into a company like this 1.4 million all right so clue if you're interested in that at all go to clue k-l-o-o -O. like i wonder if they think about this like k lou lou you know what a lou is it's a toilet it's a bathroom right it's a tough uh, you know uh, k lou clue, clue. Clue.com. I don't think it's launched right now. You can re request an invite, but uh, go on Clue.com. K-L-O-O.com. Second story. Uh, this company called Bump Network, which is not to be confused with the technology bump, B-U.M-P, bump. Uh, this is bump-network.com, raised $2.3 million. And we talked about, I think, one of their products, bump.com, back in episode number 27 but this is, I guess, the parent company, Bump Networks, that raised this amount of money, $2.3 million. Yeah, $2.3 million, uh, led uh, by uh, Tomorrow Ventures, which is Eric Schmidt's uh, uh, venture firm, uh, Zig Capital, um, uh, JCB Investments, More Venture Partners, and Lejola Holdings, um, and a couple of other individuals. And, and they'd already raised uh, about another two, just over two million before. So they're, they're almost uh, four and a half million bucks now, uh, all in San Diego based company. Um, and uh, what they are doing is, is they're going after white labeled, um, you know, loyalty card platform in, in, in a cloud model. Uh, which is kind of interesting because right now one of the big things that we hear over and over again from retailers and brands and all the location-based you know uh, deal platforms out there is you know what happened to loyalty and everybody's revisiting loyalty right now as, as you know you know a key part of the discussion uh, in how they're going to combine you know these these engagement platforms with you know return engagement and and customer loyalty. Um, and so, you know, I, I think there is a lot of room for something like this, um, you know, to come out there. And, and, and especially when you have, you know, new chains emerging, you know, small businesses that want loyalty cards, uh, you know, and, and, and empowering them to create these things uh, is an interesting uh, angle here. Uh, I mean, it, it is, and it's probably a necessary, uh, a necessary technology that, that, uh, that will come to fruition. Um, but these guys, it's not a lot of money, uh, $2.3 million, but you know, um, good, good for them. Bump hyphen network.com. If you're interested bump hyphen network.com. There they are right there. All right. So that's it. That's the funding. Two stories. We had an extra story on the news. So we thought we, we keep it, uh, we keep it a little bit, uh, slender on the funding stories. Um, you know, I think that there was some kind of statistic though, that just came out. Uh, I think it was this past quarter. Somewhere between three and four hundred million dollars in the U.S. was invested into mobile startups. This is obviously a uh, the reemergence of uh, of the investment era around that. It's not a whole lot of money, but certainly when you're talking about not needing a whole lot of money, you're not building infrastructure here. Three or four hundred million dollars is a good amount of money, especially in these size deals: two point three, one point four million dollar deals. So these all contribute to great opportunity for innovation. Just go out there and innovate. Go and innovate. Don't duplicate. Innovate. How's that for a slogan? There you Here go. go. You, heard it, you heard it from Rob. You know, and it doesn't come from a better source than Don't that. Don't duplicate. Innovate. All right. Uh, our last piece here, which is, uh, you know, we've talked about this, Asif, man. Have we ever talked about this cluster, which is uh, the mobile payment, mobile purchasing, mobile wallet space, haven't we? We talked about this a lot. And uh, I, I love this. I don't know who did it. Who, who put this together uh, for, uh, for us? Uh, it was done by uh, Mobile Payments Today, uh, which is part of NetWorld Alliance, uh, a great organization that uh, runs a bunch of amazing conferences uh, that, that we at the LBMA are fortunate to be uh, partnered with uh, uh, on a number of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I pulled this resource out this week because, you know, there's so much discussion around mobile payments right now. There's so much uh, confusion. Every week there's 10 new platforms that launch somewhere in the world. Somebody does a deal with somebody else. Square finally uh, gets rolled out in uh, in Starbucks this past week, uh, as an example. Um, there's a lot going on, and, and it's really confusing to retailers and brands that are trying to figure out, you know, what's what and what's an apple and what's an orange, and you know, and uh, and and who are the leading leading players in those categories. And so, great little infographic here uh, they put out that kind of groups the uh, the providers into the different pieces you know point of sale loyalty platforms mobile wallets contactless payment 
uh, money transferring, um, you know, and, and, you know, a few other things going on and on here. So just a nice job of, you know, simply, you know, grouping the companies and, and helping you understand, uh, you know, what, what the categories are. Yeah, I, I, I love this. Um, and you know what I noticed right away is that um, there is a lot of duplicate companies, right? So PayPal is in pretty much every category or like Zong is in one category, which is a PayPal company. And then PayPal are in, are in two or three other uh, categories. And and I think that this is kind of indicative of, of uh, the land grab that's going on right now in this space. And God, I love, you know, it's it just, it, it clarifies everything, how, how clustered this industry is and how many people are vying for this. So when you look up and you say, hey, am I really going to fight all of these guys in order to be able to get into this space? No, yeah. differentiate, leverage what they're doing, but don't go after them. And the other thing that it, it dawned on me is that I've interviewed a whole lot of these guys early on, a year, a year and a half, two years ago, even some of them like um, More Magic and, uh, and a couple of these companies, including PayPal, around these early, and Visa, around these very early plays that they were doing back then. And, and uh, I love to see these guys still kicking around and, and uh, fighting, smaller companies fighting with the big guys for, uh, for a lot of these, uh, you know, for supremacy. And, and this is... This is big, but it's very confusing, and it's going to be more confusing before it gets clear. Right? This is a very cool, yes. very cool. Without, without doubt, yeah, yeah. There's certain, there's certainly uh, a shakeout yet to come. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the, the fact that they did this. I'm going to pull it up right here. Uh, MobilePaymentsToday.com. They did this, which is absolutely awesome. Really happy that they did this because it requires clarity. Boy, does it ever require clarity? The high stakes world of mobile payments. So you can get that uh, if you go to the lbma.com forward slash research. It's the first research item. If not, just scroll down and look for uh, high stakes world of mobile payments, and you can and you can download that uh, that infographic that I just showed. Very cool. All right, see if we got nothing left. That, That's that it. is it. Um, you know, uh, another uh, another another great uh, lineup of, of stories there, uh, and I'm sure there'll be plenty more uh, as there always is next week, and so. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm off to uh, get ready to hop on a plane in a little bit and uh, head over to uh, the UK, and uh, I'm sure it'll be a dozen more companies that uh, I haven't heard of yet that I'll be uh, encountering there, and uh, we'll we'll be able to talk about uh, in the next couple of weeks. So absolutely, we'll get a full recap of uh, Asif's whirlwind uh, tour. First, uh, we we talked about Singapore. We'll talk about London next week when he is back on firm Canadian ground, back in Toronto next weekend. For episode number one of 104. But until then, Asif, man, safe flight. For those of you who are out there listening, watching, whatever you're doing, please let us know how we did uh, on this show. Did we miss anything? The things that you wanted to hear that we did not talk about, reach out, Asif at the LBMA.com or uh, untether at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you or just hit us up on Twitter. That would be great as well. So, Asif, man, safe travels. Uh, get back to Canada safe, get some rest, and uh, we'll see you next week. All right. Thanks, All right. Rob. Take care. Hello, everybody, and welcome to This Week in Location-Based Marketing. It is late at night for me, early in the morning for a Asif, actually mid-morning for a Asif on, uh, I'm, I'm talking to you from November 10th. Asif is talking to you from November, or, oh, fuck, let me do that again. Hello, everybody, and welcome to This Week in Location-Based Marketing. It is late at night for me, November 10th. Mid morning for a Seif November. Oh, I did it again. <laughs>